Hello, this is the Chart Profit webcast. Bring this out earlier than usual. This is a Thursday, 6th of August, we're about two hours into the trading day. Late last month, we had some uh, buying here and here on the profile on the e mini SP, which we're looking at here, September contract. We've now gone into a bit of a range here um, early this month. No significant selling marked yet, but uh, interestingly, the levels that we have of so far this week um, cap the high on the low so uh, 2107 up here has been the high on Wednesday high of the week which is our uh, resistance level over here and the half range off the May high at 2080.25 has so far been the low of the week the other important level is the 2095 point of control which you can see we spent some time here yesterday as well we're looking here at uh, an hourly chart going back a good few days. So here's that resistance up at 2107, and here's the support at 2080.25, uh, and there's the point of control in the middle there. Currently, we're heading back down to that support. Price below this level would be weaker price location. So in the pre-open that uh, uh, and before that, if we can get some price printing time up here above 2107 that would put the e-mini into a strong price location and then you'd expect breakout but this has been obvious resistance proven resistance now here's the new york breadth chart through close on wednesday we particularly watch these two indicators and uh, currently they're not quite supportive these bullish percent numbers the percentage of stocks greater than their 50 day moving average uh, still well below 50 here actually have been since uh, since late May and if we look at the breadth charts for uh, the Nasdaq could certainly do with improving both below their important levels and actually so is the Russell 2000 uh, breadth chart as well so these charts could certainly do with improving we need to see the internals uh, getting a little stronger should that occur we'd see this uh, the breadth bar here on the pulse chart um, getting back to green over here which is the same for some time now we need to see this improve momentum is positive above the zero line which you could call a uh, positive price trend as we know these have been heading lower has a tendency to get back to zero when it does that So there may be a little more waiting here. What we don't want to see is price breaking down below important levels. Uh, 209.92 on the S&P, for instance, here, which is the 12-month point of control. If we look here on the live chart, here's the half range level just below that point of control off the May high, which we're hoping will provide support. But price down here would be weaker. So the uh, large cap diamonds, Dow Jones ETF, probably relatively the weakest. And also IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, um, printing below its half range off the June high and below its seven month point of control at 124.50. This chart really relatively disappointing recently. Usually good to see the small caps leading, they're certainly not at the moment. Leader amongst the four stock index ETFs is the Q's printing in a strong price location up here above its 12 month point of control at 108.60. Quick check on the two sectors that we've been favoring and looking at recently. Financials uh, still holding up relatively strong above its uh, major point of control at 24.25. And also technology sector, XLK, above its uh, major point of control which is way down here. But just currently um, just testing below its half range uh, off the May high. So the charts on this Thursday maneuvering themselves into a weaker price location and uh, we need to see some improvement in that um, and the price momentum turning back up and also the breadth improving. So just in the short term analysis you can certainly see um, charts looking a little better than they currently do. This is the Europe uh, index stock 600. Um, Europe's had a pretty good week so far and has certainly maneuvered itself back into this chart at least into a strong position 
uh, above the levels that we've identified here as support. So Europe doing pretty well. We looked at these levels last week. Here's the DAX, German DAX. Um, pretty good price location, quite a strong week. Along European stocks, you want to see these levels hold as support. The UK FTSE 100 index, as we said last week, it hit resistance here, which is the uh, major point of control at 68.05. We have another very similar in time point of control down here, which was tested twice as support. So we've seen it rally back, but we haven't yet seen the FTSE recover the halfway point um, along with other UK indices. So price back up here. Uh, above 6800 would be much stronger price location certainly that's what we're looking for before we add any risk on this side of the pond quickly look at the sentiment uh, indicators the ridex has moved more or less nowhere so far this week um, last significant event was uh, when the ratio on my version of the ratio hit an eight month low back here in early july which was kind of corresponding roughly to that low um, we've had a bit of a rally from there it's hoping to see uh, the S&P pushing higher uh, and great if the ratio stays down here in a sort of contrarian fashion, but obviously we need to see price location, etc. improve. And as we pointed out last week, uh, the public poll the, from AAII, um, we said that uh, balls percentage last week, previous week was 21.1, it's actually up slightly from there, but 21.1% last week, that was very close to a two-year low for the balls percentage. And bears percentage is actually lower this week at 31.7, but previous week was 40.7. Bears percentage at 40.7, and that was the highest bears percentage since August 2013. Also the net, the bulls minus the bears, previous week a negative 19.6. That was the lowest for more than two years, this red histogram line over there. As you said, there were plenty of bears emerging relatively to recent numbers in this poll. So there is some fuel here. The investors intelligence poll this week actually more bears than last week. The balls percentage was lower, 42.2, so less balls this week. That 42.2% uh, balls percentage, that's the lowest since October. Bears percent unchanged at 17.5, that's the highest since October. So the four-week moving average of net balls minus bears at 28, this yellow line, that's also now the lowest since October. So again, in a sort of contrarian fashion, there's very little to worry about um, from the uh, sentiment indicators that we looked at so far. And uh, looking at the VIX here, actually, volatility, in, uh, volatility index, the black line at the bottom here. I've got various bands and things on there that I put just to see the position of the VIX relative to its extremes. Uh, currently, we're kind of neutral on the VIX, I think. One thing you can see here is that when the VIX spikes quite dramatically, uh, above those upper bands, reasonable indication of fear in the market, and we tend to get market lows at those points. But let's say currently we're neutral. We'll look at the supporting charts now. Uh, looking at T bonds, it's been pushing higher. This is TLT, the T bond ETF. And Monday this week it reached its highest level since April. Um, as I said this morning, it's pulled back from there, but momentum, that's the price oscillator that I use, my indicator, still positive and up, which is here on the price chart. Um, as we know, T-Bonds oscillated around its uh, major point of control and has actually come higher. Next resistance level, the one that I can identify the closest, is the halfway point off the high earlier in the year. What I tend to do is if we're um, not getting uh, like an, in an obvious indication from price location, which we're currently not, um, at that point we start to look at the technicals, these sort of things, to give us a guide. And currently, as this is positive and up, I'm assuming until that turns down that T-bonds are generally in an uptrend off this point of control here and here's the potential resistance. So short term looks fairly positive. We're looking at gold and other precious metals last week and oil um, and just particularly on gold looking at um, the sentiment here we're looking at the Rydex precious metals assets fund uh, and we were saying that at this point the public uh, according to this indicator have no interest in the long side of gold. Um, Something similar occurred back here uh, earlier in the year in March, back here, and we did get a rally in a kind of ranging um, period for the last few months, and then we saw when it broke back below the halfway point off that low, went very weak again. But here we are breaking to new lows in sentiment, and you have to start looking at the contrarian situation at that point, and you have to say there is just nothing on the chart at all to indicate 
that price might be turning here. So I'm staying negative on gold until we see something from price. Uh, I'm expecting uh, prices to go lower, even though the sentiment looks a little overdone. Gold, to my mind, has a strong correlation with the Aussie dollar, which I'm going to show you now. Um, and just the fact that the Aussie dollar, as we know, broke this really major, major support here, a proven support across many months. And when that broke down there, we obviously expected the Australian dollar to show some weakness, which it's done. Um, and as it's correlated to gold, I want to see the Australian dollar back up here, minimum as a kind of supportive chart for gold. Uh, so we don't see any of this currently. Another chart we can look at for gold is the dollar index. There's an inverse correlation here, so you, at minimum you want to see dollar index in a, in a weak position below this halfway point, uh, even better below the 12-month point of control. But again, we're not seeing that. Um, in fact, we've seen sort of a higher low on the chart here. And this is strong price location, so the dollar still looks strong, certainly on this chart. Australian dollar looks weak. That means to me that gold is still... As far as the long side goes, very risky, risky, very speculative. And when you look at the charts, you could see actually the possibility for gold, GLD here, you know, maybe just tanking. It's possible. And one reason for that, if we look at the uh, monthly chart here for the entire history that I have for GLD, um, this halfway point just below the point of control, uh, you know, this is extremely weak price location. And I just don't see the support here. Having said that, if we look at cash gold, a long-term chart back to the 80s on the monthly, there is the support. We looked at this chart before. That's where we've reached. If we see a little more weakness, uh, we move immediately into a really weak price location on cash gold. Here's uh, SLV, the silver ETF. Again, still a really weak-looking chart. And if you look at uh, silver, cash silver here, long-term chart, uh, the major point of control at 1731, and you just get the big picture where this is resistance. So for this chart, minimum, let's see price printing back up here above that level. And this just looks like a really weak price location. This is DBC, the commodity ETF. We've looked at this chart a few times, the 18-month point of control was a resistance here and then we saw um, sell off when the, that level was rejected and this obviously now down on a new low here looks like this on the monthly sorry the weekly chart here these are really significant charts this is USO the oil fund ETF down at a new low here we talked about the possibility of that low being taken out when uh, we saw 16 months point of control migrate higher and then we had this little period underneath it and especially when that half range off the low to the high in there, subsequent high uh, and this, this is a really weak price location and then we talked about this being taken out and where's the support? Here's the monthly chart, still looks like a falling knife on this chart Okay, we looked at the dollar index and the Aussie dollar chart uh, where we saw continued uh, strength for the dollar and here we're looking at the dollar yen this is still a strong looking chart above the points of control and now uh, seem to have found support there on the half range off the May high so this is really strong price location here's the Euro FX chart um, a problem as we know with the 12 month point of control as resistance I said last week, previous week, that what we'd be looking for is uh, in the minimum, in just in the short term time frame, uh, you want to see price giving you just a little higher low um, above that halfway point off the March low to this high. Just gives you an idea of strength in the chart by watching how price is behaving relative to those levels and currently sitting below there. So even in the short time frame, the euro showing currently no strength yet against the dollar. So the dollar's been strong on all those charts so far. And finally, here's the uh, British pound. And we've said over the last uh, couple of webcasts that 156.70, the 12-month point of control here, this resistance uh, would be the minimum. Uh, we want to see the pound printing above that before we could anticipate any strength at all. And that continues to be a resistance here. So the dollar looking pretty good at currently. I looked at this chart 
sent a link to this the other day. At the start of each month, for the last three or four months, I've been looking at, or looking in, in more detail at this uh, decennial um, pattern that we've been using for years now, um, and just trying to look at the shorter time frame. So basically, this is August for the Dow uh, in the five year, a year that ends in five. And we're using data here from the last nine decades to create a kind of averaged look at what August uh, usually looks like. Uh, and from the starting point here on the average August, it's in a bit of a range for the first part of the month through to about here, which is about the 21st of the month. Um, we see weakness at the start of the month down to, you know, it's probably today down here, this sort of time period. And we've got a rally, a bit of a decline, so we're ranging here and then market starts to head higher on average. One feature of the um, decade cycle that uh, I've been considering for a while now is the fact that the year ending in five, the fifth year that we're currently in, is usually the strongest. We've been in um, the most bullish few months of the decade cycle and we're still within that. Um, so over a 10 year cycle uh, we have been in and we're currently still in a very very bullish period and yet the market really hasn't done much at all, it's been pretty muted. So that may be telling us something about the market in the longer term, but right here I'm looking at uh, more in detail and see if the decade cycle, it's just an experiment really, I'm kind of forward testing it. So let's look at some other charts here. I'm not going to be reading too much uh, into this, I'm just looking at a very small sample so far, but it's kind of interesting. This is uh, the average May that we looked at back in May, at the start of May. And all I'm doing here, I'm just just re-looking at these charts, just kind of highlighting uh, the bullish periods. So from the start of March, I beg your pardon, from the start of May through to about the 23rd, we got a pretty bullish uh, period in the decennial cycle. And we get some weakness or a flat period from from that point through to about the 10th of June here. And then we have a positive period uh, followed by a weaker period later in the month. And then this strong period here through to about the 15th of July, kind of mid-month in July. Then a weaker period down to the 23rd and then we get strong again through to the end of the month. Weird. Okay, here's the point. Um, taking those uh, periods uh, in yellow that we just saw and transposing those onto the Dow itself or the diamonds from the start of May, the actual data. And these shaded areas are all forecasted uh, and what we're actually seeing is the actual Dow here on this calendar chart. It's a very small sample size. I'm just sharing this with you. It's um, something I'm going to be following going forward, but uh, it seems to have worked pretty well across this time period. So uh, yellow would be the positive periods uh, in this cycle across this period and the darker shading would be periods where we'd see uh, a weaker market and that seems to be the way it's played out. So that's all really encouraging. Possibly we can use this long-term cycle in a short-term fashion. And what's kind of interesting is that the uh, more negative uh, periods here and here and here sort of responded to the cycle pretty well and uh, there's quite a obvious weakness across those periods where on the bullish side or on the positive shades and say they're particularly uh, bullish periods for the market which again may indicate that the bias overall is still for the bear side so I'm looking for various ways to use this information this data seems insane you can take data back for about a hundred years and then use it in such a short term time frame but that's what I'm going to look to do. We'll see how this pans out. Okay, I'm going to finish there. I want to look at the spider. A little bit of weakness. This is weaker price location on this Thursday. We'll see where the week finishes. We'll assess the chance in the ebook going into next week. Okay, that does conclude. It's a little early, but I will nevertheless uh, wish you a good weekend. And once again, thank you for watching.